All right, what's going on, boys and girls? So we are here with a email. I usually don't do emails. Um, I got into a discussion with this user on my comment section in YouTube. So let's just roll right into this. He goes by the name Indigo Worm on YouTube. Uh, I built a PC running Hackintosh, which is still a pretty solid running Sierra. So I bought a new SSD to install Linux on, as I've heard, dual booting on the same drive isn't a good idea. Um, so I'll just answer that first question. Um, each OS, give it its own drive. Simple as that. Instead of one, if you try doing, you can do multiple OSs on one drive. The problem is you lose everything on those drives once those go down potentially. You know, blow up, grub blows up, take your pick, whatever reason. I personally am just going to recommend that each OS have its, its own drive. Um, hardware. Uh, I've got a Gigabyte uh, Z97D3H motherboard, 16 gigs of RAM, a NVIDIA GTX 960, 2 gigs. Uh, the Hackintosh uses the Clover bootloader, so it's straightforward. Uh, so is it straightforward to install Linux on a new drive? Yes. No. <laughs> yes, it's straightforward. No, it's not straightforward with Hackintosh. I cannot speak 100% on experience on this because I looked into Hackintosh and I was like, yep, nope. Short version is um, it can probably be done. Probably isn't an issue. My recommendation to you is unplug all your Hackintosh or other operating system drives and just leave the blank SSD that you have are looking to install Linux on in the machine as the only drive. And I'll get into that particular question because that'll answer a different question. Um, your next question is, uh, da, 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 da. is this decent hardware for a good Linux performance or a good Linux experience? Yes, but I don't know what your CPU is, so I can't 100% quote that. Um, just going by what you have stated, uh, SSDs, a 960, 16 gigs of RAM, you'll run fine. Uh, do I need to format differently uh, the Linux, uh, USB for Linux install? And what about the destination drive format as I'll be doing all of the, uh, the prep on the Hackintosh? Great thing with Linux. The, form, the, the format for the drive doesn't really matter. Linux reads a shit ton of different file formats and file systems. Um... So that particular portion really doesn't matter. And do I need to format differently the USB? Uh, here's the great thing. There's a program called Etcher. There's a Mac version. Download it. Install the DMG. Um, once that's installed, plug it in the USB drive. Download a Linux distro of your choice. Pop open the program. Pop open your uh, finder. Click on the, the ISO. Step one, done. Step two, find your USB. Step two, done. Step three, click the giant button that says flash and it'll install the uh, Linux distro of your flavor to a USB drive. End of story. Next, unplug it, put a plug it into your USB drive on your Hackintosh or your current system. Tell it to boot from the USB. You'll get a Linux live environment, which is just not gonna be something most people are familiar with. Um, and go and click install once you get to the, the live environment go through the install process you won't you'll only have one option for the drive because i told you to unplug them all the other ones you only have one destination drive anyway so it doesn't matter what the fuck the format is and click install and it'll install to that that one drive that's on the system that entire drive will be nothing but linux um do you know anyone who does hackintosh yeah, not really. Um, Hackintoshes used to be a really, really big thing. 2007, 8, 9, 10. You know, back when Mac OS was really, really big. Um, it's kind of fallen off from what I've seen, at least on that particular end. There's not as many users trying to... Excuse me. There's not as many users as I once saw doing it anymore. I'm not saying there aren't users doing it. I'm just saying I don't see it as often. Um, so, no. Unfortunately, I do not. Um... I'm sure there are videos around there. Just uh, hack and talk, just 
search for something like dual boot hackintosh and you know pick you know ubuntu as the linux distro because usually that'll bring up the most search results um your next one is so what happens to 1904 will that upgrade to a new version or become part of the next one um kind of both uh yes it'll upgrade to the next version which will be 1910 which the short-term versions, um, like 1904 and 1910, are nine-month supports. Those are basically feature tests for the LTS version, which in this case would be 20, uh, 2004. And LTS stands for a long-term support. Um, that's pretty much what it is. And each one rolls into the next one. You can upgrade from within the OS or the Ubuntu. It's pretty self-explanatory. Um, it, you know, when the new release is up, it comes up with a giant, hey, new release. Want to upgrade? Um, so next, uh, what do I use? I do not use backslash Linux anymore. As much as I love what they were trying to do with that, it is too damn out of date. Um, what I actually use right now is Manjaro with a desktop environment called the Shell, which is based around Qt and Plasma. Um, that's more because I like weird and different. I'm the guy who uses Enlightenment still. Um, it seems the two main, two, uh, the main two desktops are GNOME and KDE. GNOME and Plasma. KDE is a project. Plasma is the desktop. Uh, that's just bad marketing on KDE's part. Uh, so uh, yes, there, essentially there are two main desktops. Um, you have GNOME and its derivatives like Budgie that use a lot of the GNOME technologies but are very, very different from how they are implemented. Then you have Plasma. Um, you have things that are based around Plasma, but a lot of the tweaks and stuff are going to be different um, and how things are handled. You're not going to have essentially what you have with Budgie or GNOME, which Budgie might as well be a fork almost at this point. Um, so that's really the major differences is like kind of in design philosophy and functionality. Katie puts a lot of functionality into the system and you can kind of get lost once you start digging into the, like beyond the surface level into the system. Gnome strips a lot of the system away. Um, they have a certain, uh, human, uh, hug, hig human interface guidelines that they, uh, you know, they, they design around some people to the, say their strengths, some people say their weakness. Um, you can say about the same with KD. You can get lost with their setting or plasma. You can get lost in the settings or you can find them to be extremely beneficial because you can customize it however you want. Um, it's a lot of different design choices and it's a lot of different, uh, technology choices between the two. That's really what makes them different. Um, as an example, Plasma slash KDE does a better job of integrating different themes like from GTK or GNOME based themes into and applications into KDE and Plasma than say when you take a Q or QT application that's written in for KDE and stick it in GNOME. It looks weird and kind of out of place. Um, that's really the biggest difference is like I, I can get into that's just high level overview. Um, your next thing is I would like a Mac flavor type experience at least to start to get, help get familiar with Linux. Uh, oh man. Um, see, here's the thing. You're not, uh, and I'm just going to be real with this. You're not going to get a Mac flavor type experience in Linux. It's just designed differently. Now, if you're talking workflow, your best bet is probably something like, you know, the, the clicky pointy gooey part. If you're talking workflow in that perspective, you're probably best off with something like Perl Linux, which very much tries to emulate, uh, emulate the look, feel, and function uh, the way Linux functions as closely to Mac OS as possible. If you're looking for something that takes the Mac OS, I'm not going to say look and feel, but if you're looking for something that is design driven, something that is kind of like, 
here's the rules to the sandbox and makes it so the, the user's a little more confined, but you understand where you need to go and how to do things, I would recommend probably elementary OS. Um, it really depends on really what you're looking for. Personally, if you're looking for support, I would definitely recommend elementary over Perl. Perl is very much a maybe one or two person operation. Elementary, there's a full team behind it that, you know, there's, uh, I'm not sure about the company, but there is a company that isn't, you know, around that. So it is definitely something to look at. Um, again, I would personally say elementary. Um, and it would be your best bet as your best starting point. It's going to give you the most clear cut implementation of Linux without really being a headache. Um, and it'll give you most of your applications that you need. And it's just, it goes for a cohesive design and interface and workflow and which very much, and this is not a knock when I say it's, it emulates Mac OS in that regard. It emulates Mac OS in the fact that it has a goal and a mindset of how it's designed. And that used to be one of the strengths of Mac OS. And I don't see that a lot in Mac OS anymore. So OS recommendation, elementary. So those are just some quick takes um, to answer your questions. I figured a 10, 12 minute video is going to be a whole lot easier than 4,000 messages back and forth in the comment section on YouTube. So what do you guys think? Uh, give me your suggestions. Give me your takes. In the go. Comment down in below. It's all for you. Um, you guys know what to do. Rate it, subscribe. Peace.